It's a battle between first and second in last year's Suburban East Conference title race. We'll see what happens in the 2019 edition as we present high school girls lacrosse from Wingard Field on the campus of Creighton Durham Hall. The Stillwater Ponies, eight-time defending section champions, go on the road to visit Creighton Durham Hall, a school playing their first game of the season. Greetings, everyone. I'm Mike Beaton alongside Robert Critta. Robert, you had a chance to see the Stillwater girls team last week in a close loss with Breck. They are the defending section champions, although they're off to a one and two start. How do they get back to 500? Well, they got to stay with what they were doing last week. They started out really hot. Of course, they cooled off, you know, around the middle, and they ended up losing the game. But I saw a lot of positive things for the Stillwater Ponies. Uh, they, they have their scoring spread out amongst many girls. So they've got scoring punch from many different angles. They just got to uh, keep possession. No uh, stupid giveaways to the other team because that's what's killing them is possession time. You were speaking of scoring. Rick Wright hopes to expand on that scoring balance. But Meredith Perry having a terrific start to this season. 12 goals already. Yeah, impressive. Uh, uh, she, and with more years to play, she's going to be something to see. There's a lot of young guns on this Stillwater team, and the same can be said for Creighton Durham Hall, who also has a first-year head coach. Youth is the theme with this Creighton Durham Hall team. It's their first game of the year. The first two games that were scheduled were canceled due to the weather, so how do they prepare going into a match against a top-tier contender in the Suburban East? Well, they're going to learn a lot about themselves today out there. They're going to learn uh, what their level of play is and what their practice ethic has taught them to, uh, to maybe get them over this hump today. They do have a couple of players who will be playing lacrosse in college. We'll talk more about that when we return. You're watching High School Girls Lacrosse. If you'd like to sponsor a TSB television broadcast, Patreon is the place. Sponsorships start at just $1 a month. Visit patreon.com slash TSB television and make a pledge for premier Twin Cities sports coverage. And we rejoin you at Wingard Field. Robert, uh, this is not the most glamorous of facilities, but this is the home for Creighton Durham Hall and I guess you get a front row seat right in front of the action, whereas compared to Stillwater, you're up way up top. Uh, so if you want to be, get a piece of what it's like, this is the place to be. Yeah, you can definitely see how uh, confusing it can be also for the players as they're all mixing around and rotating and so many players at once. Being down at field level gives you that more of that view at seeing what they see. Now, normally, you're right, we, we're way above them, and you can see the play develop from above. It's easier to see. But uh, on this kind of, in this situation, but outdoor for outdoor broadcasting, the place we're in, the, the beautiful weather we have right now, it's, it's perfect. I can't say enough about it. Before the game started, the Raiders held a moment of silence to honor a coach of theirs who died last week, Tia Zachman. Tia was a junior who was majoring in communications at Concordia St. Paul, and she was also a teammate of Sheila Osborne, the first-year head coach for the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. The funeral for Tia was held earlier today. Tia was a graduate of St. Michael Albertville. A tough loss for everyone, and we would like to pass along our support to the Creighton Durham Hall lacrosse team and the community as they honor one of their fallen in Tia Zachman. And I spoke with a couple of the Creighton Durham Hall parents, Jeff and Mary Rhoda, and they told me it's tough to have your season opener after such a harrowing experience, but everyone is moving forward as best as they can, and I was told this last week everyone's been sharing laughs and tears as they reminisced about Tia Zachman, who was the head coach of the junior varsity team and the, one of the best ways to move forward is to have a game. There will be plenty of games as the season moves along. And naturally, this season for Creighton Durham Hall will be dedicated to Tia Zachman and her memory. And with a boisterous chant, the girls get set up for the faceoff. Boisterous indeed. And so whatever feelings the Raiders have, they're going to put that aside for the next 50 minutes to play some lacrosse. They are the defending Suburban East Conference champions. Stillwater defending section champions eight years running. 
And they waste no time getting themselves going on offense. And Tara Noggle, Tara 13 Noggle. seconds into the game, gives us our first goal. Which is not surprising. She showed us a lot of that in the last match we watched. Noggle with three goals entering this game. The Ponies started their season with a 9-5 win over Lakeville North, and they've lost two in a row, 11-9 against Breck. That game was carried on Valley Access channels, and a 17-5 loss to Chanhassen. And as you noted in the open, finding some scoring outside of Meredith Perry is going to be key for this team. And Rick Wright, Stillwater's head coach, told me as much. Meredith having a great start to the season. But he liked to see some other players get in on the action. With girls across, of course, we play halves. And the clock will not stop unless there's a goal or until we get to the last couple of minutes. So these are quick moving halves. And that will stay Creighton Durham Hall ball. These two teams met a year ago at Stillwater. Creighton Durham Hall won that one by a single goal and that allowed them to win the conference title. But a lot of new faces on this team. As we mentioned, there are a couple of college recruits on Creighton Durham Hall's roster. Olivia Crawford, she'll be going to Fort Lewis, a Division II school. I want to say that was Lowry Dobbs. Yeah, the sunlight's diffusing right. Let's see, who scored that? That was Anne Marie Rhoda who scored, and she is the other college commit on Creighton Durham Hall's roster. Rhoda going to George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. And she scores 90 seconds in, so a couple of quick goals, and Rick Wright told me he felt this could be a high-scoring game. And we already are getting a taste of that here. Creighton Durham Hall wins the faceoff. The one difference outside of the time between girls and boys, you'll see a lot of fouls call, but not necessarily as many penalties for girls lacrosse. And that shot from number seven off the mark, that was Kira Ryan. But it stays with the Raiders, they'll line up again. That's number 11, Siobhan Keeley. You're right, the sunlight, at least on this end of the field, it's going to mess with us a little bit, at least until it sets. And we're going to have a right. And so a penalty here. It's charged to Creighton Durham Hall. Charge. So that gives Stillwater possession. And a break for the Ponies there because that takes away a potential scoring chance on the part of the Raiders. Now, as you know, you have 20 seconds to get the ball and that's going to be another foul on the Raiders going against Olivia Crawford as she tried to get the stick check on Cindy Reinseth, number six. So Stillwater can trot down the field. Here's Noggle. Waving away through traffic. Whistle just before... Noggle got the shot off. Let's see what this is on. 
who or who this is on. And that's unfortunate because Noggle, she would have had a goal right there. But it's on the Raiders, so Noggle's going to get a free shot at Kaylee Smith, the Raiders goalie. So Naga will try again. Lost it. But an, uh, I think it was for his rule. If the player is, is the infractions against the player scoring, why would they take away a goal? It wasn't against, you're, you're right. I, I think that in that case, the whistle came before the shot attempt. But Naga will get another free shot after drawing another foul. And this time, Kaylee Smith gets the block. So Noggle, it would have been 2-1 Stillwater, but that's one of those rare cases we've got another foul. One of those rare cases where a foul works out for the defending team. But it's still Stillwater ball. Andy McGuire with the ball. Andy McGuire, number five. Goes top shelf and gives Stillwater a 2-1 lead. And that's one of the few times where I can say for sure that was scored unassisted. That comes at 4.33 in the first half. Officials having a quick conference. Speaking of college commits, we highlighted some of Cretans. On Stillwater's side, Sammy Chang, who picked up a silver medal in the team gymnastics meet this past winter. She'll be going to Lindenwood, one of the top D2 lacrosse schools in the country. And Ellie Fedorowski is headed to Concordia University, where Sheila Osborne currently plays. Stillwater wins a faceoff. This is Grace Lilla, who was once a figure skater before moving on to lacrosse and other things. And nice stick check on the part of Creighton Durham Hall. Ellie Fedorowski had a prime chance otherwise, so Creighton Durham Hall playing some solid defense there. And now we're going to have a foul on the ponies. Abby Steigoff tried to move it up. Loose ball. Who's going to grab it? If the Raiders get it, oh no, we're <laughs> no one's going to get it. We're going to have a foul instead. Win against the Ponies. Play resumes. Centering pass is off the mark. It's scooped up by number 11, Siobhan Keeley. Keeley fires, and I think Laney Charlson got a piece of it. Charlson holds the single game state record for most saves. It came last year in the state quarterfinal against Eden Prairie. She had 11 saves against Chanhassen, but Chanhassen just too much in that 17-5 drubbing. And there is Sammy Chang trying to wrestle away possession. Yeah, she took a little roll on that, but with her gymnastics training, probably not a problem. <laughs> no. And I talked to Rick Wright about that. It, it's rare to see someone who plays gymnastics and lacrosse. You get a lot of hockey crossovers because of the hand-eye coordination. But he told me what helps Grace, or Sammy Chang, I should say, her athleticism. You may not have the same coordination as you would picking up hockey, but there's a lot of finesse, balance, and as I got a chance to see this winter with some of her routines, I mean, it's amazing she's going to college for lacrosse because she was an accomplished gymnast as well. And I don't think anyone would doubt her hand-eye coordination being a gymnast. You may not be trying to corral pucks, but you got to make sure you land on your feet with all of those tumbles. Because the last thing you want to do is fall on your face. And uh, I think Stillwater was able to take over. Yes, they did. Didn't see what happened there, but the Ponies catching a couple of breaks here. Would it look like Creighton Durham Hall was sitting up for an attack. That's Jacqueline Colzer moving the ball up. They were trying to pass up front. McGuire does collect it. Now we'll go around the net. Up, 
You noted this on Thursday. A lot of teams, when they're on the attack, they'll have someone behind the net to be within reach if a shot goes wide, but also to run a play because it's easier to see when you're behind the net the formation that's out there. It is, and it also uh, it adds confusion to the goalie on your positioning, uh, which can be an advantage. Stillwater was looking for a backdoor play to Terranago, couldn't make it happen, and Creighton Durham Hall takes over. First game of the season for the Raiders, Stillwater one and two. Hold on Stillwater, so Creighton Durham Hall will hang on to it. Lucy Salander going up. Met a wall. Oh, a foul on Grace Lill. I was going to say Grace was exhibiting some fine defense there, but she made a little too much contact. Well, Creighton Durham Hall, they were looking for the centering pass up front. It will stay Raiders ball, though. They were looking for Anne Marie Rhoda, who scored our first goal. Shot goes wide right. That was Anne Marie Rhoda. Raiders hang on to it, but a foul is called on Creighton Durham Hall. Officials weren't ready to restart play. As we noted, you'll see more fouls in the girls' version, not as many penalties per se. They still can happen. Stillwater going back to the goalie, Charlson, to reset the play. Here's McGuire. McGuire backs off. Stillwater making a couple of changes on their roster. And not just a graduation as we see number 44, Kitty Kangas. Kangas, one of the first year varsity members alongside Caitlin Shanahan and Sydney Reinseth. Those are three folks who didn't see much time last year. Creighton Durham Hall took possession following the foul there. Loose ball. And it's scooped up by McGuire, so the Ponies get a turnover and they can set up for another attack. Tara Noggle's another one. She's been dealing with shin splints for the last year, so Rick Wright moved her from the middle to an attacking position so she doesn't put as much wear and tear on those knees. Yeah, important for a player that you count on like Tara Noggle to keep her healthy. Looked like Lauren Einan was going to set up. And we've got a foul instead on the ponies. 64 degrees under sunny skies. Next few days are going to be beautiful for outdoor sports. Another foul. Stillwater applying the four check. Well, aggressive stick checking by Stillwater is causing Krina to keep uh, losing the ball, but being a re-awarded possession. Twelve forty-one left in the first half. Stillwater up two to one. We had three goals in the first five minutes, and not a whole lot of quality chances since. <laughs> it 
only took 13 seconds for Tara Noggle to score. And Annie McGuire picked up her fourth goal of the year as well when she scored at the 433 mark. I think that's the uh, third point blank miss by Creighton up close. They need to find out. Uh, they need to hit that net or the goalie. They'll hang on to it. And we mentioned this Creighton Durham Hall team attending the f funeral for Tia Zachman at the funeral. They presented Zachman's family with a memory book. There's another point blank shot going wide. That was from Rhoda. The memory book featured photos of Tia in action as a coach and handwritten letters from every one of the players on this roster. Stillwater coming back. Noggle to McGuire. McGuire had a little bit of trouble, but Stillwater wasn't looking for the transition chance there, so plenty of time. There's Ellie Fedorowski. She'll go back out to Laura Nynan and Stillwater taking their time here. Ellie with that uh, fast stutter step trying to get the defense to bite on a, on a, on a quick split turn, but, but not buying it. <laughs> Meredith Perry, who leads the team in goals, tried to bring it up and Creighton Durham Hall, they were ready for. Stillwater trying to find a way inside that shell that Creighton Durham Hall has set up. Now we'll go to Creighton Durham Hall, a fine defensive stance there by the Raiders. They did not give Stillwater any opening. And it looked like Grace Lilla was gonna try to make her way through Creighton Durham Hall. Their defense was true there. As we noted, Creighton Durham Hall's head coach, Sheila Osborne, her first year as the head coach at varsity, graduated from this very school four years ago. And she was a standout lacrosse player when she wore the purple and gold. She also played soccer and hockey, went to Augsburg originally and then transferred to Concordia. Always good to see a graduate get involved with the program. Keeping busy in the community. Indeed. And Stillwater calls a timeout with 8.59 left in the first half. It's still 2-1. We haven't had a goal in about 13 minutes of game time. So after some early scoring chances, both teams doing a good job of sealing the middle. There, uh, there weren't a lot of uh, possession giveaways, a few by Creighton and a few by Stillwater, but uh, no team has really found a, uh, both teams trying to feel each other for a, like a weakness, a uh, weakness on the left or the right or the defense or maybe the offense. But uh, so far, both teams playing quite equal, like you said, Mike. And the biggest takeaway, I think, so far, Meredith Perry, 12 goals in the first three games of the season. She has yet to score here. Yeah, I think she's just warming up, Mike. She's going she's gonna to bring out the big guns here pretty quick. I would think if Perry can find a way to get active as the game moves along, that could be a chance for the Ponies to go up big. But remember, these two teams played each other a year ago, and it came down to a one-goal decision. So we might be heading in that direction again. Yeah, so far this game is like that. Very, very closely matched. Other games of note. 
On May 2nd, we'll have a live broadcast when Stillwater hosts Forest Lake. Robert and I will be there. And also in May, they'll go on the road to play Apple Valley. Apple Valley, one of the top programs in girls lacrosse. And I believe they'll end the regular season with a home game against Minnehaha Academy on May 23rd. And Minnehaha, a solid program. And as we noted the last time we were together, this is a one-class sport, so every game means something. As far as seeding with section and state, I know it's rare at this, uh, at this level to have one-class sports. We resume play, Stillwater possession, pass intended for Ellie Fedorowski. She's able to scoop it up. Minor miscue there from Kangas to Fedorowski, but we play on. Goggle drew the foul there, has a chance. A little slow, I think Creighton got a jump on her. So she's gonna go with a centering pass instead to Perry. And Kaylee Smith read it all the way. A fine save by Kaylee Smith to keep it a 2-1 game. She's made a couple of really nice saves here tonight already. Push foul on Lilla. Abby Steigoff brings it up, draws another foul. And she's not wasting any time. As soon as the whistle's called and the official makes the signal, Stigoff is ready, trying to get even a half step on the ponies. Stick check by Annie McGuire. And we're going the other way. You could say Stillwater, they've controlled possession, but Creighton Durham Hall doing an outstanding job keeping this a 2-1 game. And another passing miscue on the part of the Ponies. They've had a couple of those. But what they've been able to do, their biggest success so far is forcing turnovers. As the Raiders put the ball in play. Kaylee Smith looking for someone to pass it to. Remember, you do have a time limit to get the ball across the midcourt line, the midfield line, I should say. And then a foul on Meredith Perry. That one pretty easy to call if you ask me. She got a push off on Kiara Ryan. Ellie Murphy picks up the pass. Thought the Raiders had a chance there. Kira Ryan was able to get King, Katie Kangas crossed up. It will see Creighton Durham Hall ball. Clock continuing to move with 5.45 left in the first half. Raiders trying to tie this up. Nice play by Caitlin Shanahan, one of the first year varsity members. Caitlin, uh, midfielder, read that pass perfectly. She did, and her hand-eye coordination was great, and picking up those loose balls can be very hard to track when they're bouncing. Ponies, they have an odd woman look here. Kitty Kangas trying to break free, tries to shovel pass to Noggle, and it's picked off 
by Ari Evans, the freshman. One of two freshmen on the varsity roster for the Raiders. There's Olivia Crawford, one of the college commits. Will play at Fort Lewis next season. And a false start, or the lacrosse equivalent of it, Grace Lilla, <laughs> got the jump, and you may have heard the officials say the defense can't start until the offensive player does. So Creighton Durham Hall looking to make this a 2-2 game. We haven't had a goal in about 20 minutes. We had some early scoring chances, but not a whole lot since then. It's still 2-1, and a foul on the Raiders. And one reason it's been a 2-1 game, Stillwater doing a tremendous job forcing turnovers. Sydney Reinseth will trot. All right, Robert, Stillwater's control possession here. How do they create another chance out of this? It's been a while since they've had a really good look at the net, or a real good look, I should say. They need to get the ball back uh, to the uh, playmakers behind the net, and they need to draw that defense close to the sides. And then when they can draw some of the players real deep, put the ball out front. McGuire tried to sidearm it. It will stay Stillwater ball. And remember, Stillwater... Could have been up 3-1, but a goal from Naga was waved off because she drew a foul before she got a shot off. And Stillwater was unable to cash in, even though they had a couple of chances. Well, there's what you're talking about, sitting up from behind. Good stick check, but Nagel's there to pick it up. After Ellie Fedorowski was under duress, now Nagel will reset the offense. Two fifty and counting. <laughs> Play at the net, and that will be. Creighton Durham Hall ball. Boy, a nifty move inside by the Stillwater player well, was denied right, uh, right at the goalie circle. <laughs> Two minute warning. Kaylee Smith, oh, a dangerous pass. Ball is loose, and McGuire almost had it, and she did. Well, foul was called. So, I'm gonna say she almost had it, but she'll get it anyway, because Stillwater draws the foul. Another chance for the Ponies to set up here. Dundonton, even though they're, they're not against the offense, they're preventing the offense from advancing. It's happened to Stillwater a couple of times where a foul call has done more harm than good for the Ponies here, but they've got plenty of time. Yep, get that ball behind the net, get that goalie moving side to side. Meredith Perry looking for an opening. She won't get it, but a foul is called. So Perry will get a free look at the net. And she awaits the signal. Perry fires. And Creighton Durham Hall may have gotten a stick on that as Perry's shot went high up. It will stay Stillwater ball. Less than a minute to play in the first. 
Right, good defensive play by Creighton. A big one, but it's still Stillwater ball with 45 seconds. Foul on the Raiders. That was Lucy Salander trying to make a play on Noggle. It's too far away for Noggle to score from this range, but with 33.9, gives opponents another chance. Stick check from behind. Noggle able to maintain possession. But can the ponies find a way inside? They've had trouble doing that since the 20 minute mark in this half. Here's McGuire. Well, Creighton Durham Hall again doing a great job protecting the interior. They're not giving anyone an opening inside. McGuire slips up and that's going to cost the Ponies a chance. Time expired. So the Ponies control possession but they only have a 2-1 lead to show for it. And that's all because of the great defensive work inside by Creighton Durham Hall. Yeah, great defensive work inside by Creighton. Uh, they're keeping an eye on the uh, on the playmakers behind the net. Uh, the, the the forwards in front were mixing left and right, and they were staying right with them, making sure that they couldn't get a good pass in in the shooting area. We'll take a quick break and bring you the second half. This is high school girls lacrosse. The Ponies lead the Raiders two to one. If you'd like to sponsor a TSB television broadcast, Patreon is the place. Sponsorships start at just $1 a month. Visit patreon.com slash TSB television and make a pledge for premier Twin Cities sports coverage. Mike Beaton and Robert Critta back with you. A short halftime break. A 2-1 lead for the Stillwater Ponies in a key Suburban East Conference battle with Creighton Durham Hall. Tara Noggle and Annie McGuire, the goal scorers for the Ponies. Amory Rhoda, the lone scorer for the Raiders. But defense was the theme of the first half. Nobody scored in the final 20 minutes and 27 seconds of the first frame. Well, that's because both teams are not giving a lot. They're not giving up the shooting area in front of their goalie. They're making the other team work from behind and cycle the ball from the outside without much luck getting inside. For Stillwater, it's been forcing turnovers. That's limited the possession time for Creighton Durham Hall. And for the Raiders, after giving up that goal to any McGuire, they have not allowed anyone to get inside. So it has not been too complicated for Kaylee Smith, the Creighton Durham Hall goalie. But the Raiders, even though they had a fine defensive showing in the first half, they're going to need to pick things up. They want to get a win here. Stillwater looking to make something happen in transition. And that was number eight getting in there for the deflection, Ellie Murphy. Kaylee Smith did have some great saves in that first half. She did, there were a couple of solid looks that she was able to send away. But this was the story of the first half, Stillwater controlling possession. As the sun sets here at Wingard Field on the campus of Creighton Durham Hall. It's a home for both boys and girls soccer and lacrosse. The lower level football teams and just down the field there, the softball team also makes uh, their home at Wingard Field. So a multi-purpose facility. And later this month, or I should say, uh, yeah, later this month, or sometime next month, uh, Stillwater and Creighton Durham Hall softball will play here. Oh, not a good pass there on the part of Creighton Durham Hall. And a foul is called against Caitlin Shanahan, break for the Raiders, because that was not us clean pass there on the part of Kaylee Smith. Right. 
Stillwater had a couple of possessions undone by sloppy passing. Let's see if the Raiders can get something going here. Once again, Stillwater really good at the stick check, able to force the ball away. And Creighton Durham Hall still trying to get the passing down. As we noted, a really young Creighton Durham Hall team. They graduated eight seniors from a year ago. Stillwater forcing another turnover. Noggle was checked by Abby Steigoff, and that's a no no, so Noggle will hang on to it and continue her march down the field. Fires and scores. She so used Steigoff as a pick. She did, it was excellent. Well, you were saying trying to work the way in, get an open look. I guess in that playbook, just use your opponent as a pick. That's the second goal of the game for Noggle. Yeah, most of the goals are scored from that area right in front of the net, and that's where you got to be. So our first goal in just about 22 minutes of game time, and that gives the Ponies a 3-1 lead. Remember, Noggle had a goal taken away because she drew a foul before firing a shot. So Noggle able to get that second goal, and... The way this game has gone so far, a two-goal lead for the Ponies could be paramount in their hopes for a win. Absolutely, a low-scoring game, two is a lot. That being said, we could get a flurry of goals in a hurry. You never know with this sport. Face-off is won by the Raiders. Olivia Crawford. Backpedal momentarily. She's double teamed and stealing the ball is Ellie Fedorowski. Nice job to knock the ball loose and then scoop it up. They don't keep track of it a whole lot at this level, but loose balls, that is a key statistic in the sport of lacrosse. And if you can force one, even better. Centering pass, perfect. Give the dime to Grace Lilla and the goal to Annie McGuire. That was a textbook perfect pass down the middle. Yeah, get, getting in that center area is so key. And now that they, they know they can get in there, you're going to see more of it. Creed's going to try to shut them out, keep them out of that area, keep them to the outside. And in the span of 50 seconds, roughly, Stillwater's looking at a three goal lead. It's four to one. Still a lot of time left. The score can change quickly in lacrosse. It can, but you have to like the, ride of, the wave of momentum Stillwater is riding. And as we noted, in a low scoring game, even a mini run like this for the Ponies will be very helpful. Because we haven't seen Creighton Durham Hall establish a whole lot of possession here. And this is a school that has dominated the Suburban East Conference up until last year when the Raiders got the win. Raiders won another faceoff, but it's the Ponies showing their might here. Not unusual though for the girls, they've won the Section 4 title eight years running. A lot of trips to state. Green Durham Hall going with a low sidewinder. And making a good read on it was Lenny Charlson. She hasn't had a whole lot to do. Now Creighton fires and scores on the second try. It's a 4-2 game. Kira Ryan with her first goal of 2019. Robert, you said this sport can change in a hurry. And after a 20 minute period where nobody could get on the board, it seemed, we've had three goals in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, Creighton really putting together a, a good offensive push here. Yeah. 
And most importantly, they were able to evade Stillwater's defenders. We noted in the first half, the Ponies doing a tremendous job knocking the ball out of the stick. So it's 4-2. to two. A much needed goal for the Raiders. And they win another faceoff. Here comes Ryan. Lost control. Had a look otherwise. Raiders will try again though. Plenty of time. Raiders are taking their time here. And if they can avoid those turnovers, they can get a few more chances like they did just there. And I think that will stay with Creighton Durham Hall. Good possession time for Creighton right now. And something I'm keeping an eye on here is if and when the lights will come on. There is lights at Wingard Field, and the sun is uh, setting here, so it's going to get dark real quick. Ryan hit from behind. That's going to be a foul, and that's going to set up Ryan with a perfect scoring chance here. Fires and right into the stick of Lenny Charlson. That was a great shot by Ryan, but right at the goalie stick there. So not too hard of a save on the part of Charlson. But a key save nonetheless. Now the Ponies move the ball downfield. Oh, what a move. What a save. Ball still loose. That was a big save by Kaylee Smith. I thought Eddie McGuire had a goal all, <laughs> all the way, but. Uh, the Korean defenders were keeping her, st were stick checking her. She really couldn't get a shot off easily here. It looked like Eddie McGuire was going to make this a three goal game, but you're right. The defenders and then Kaylee Smith making a big save there to keep this. A uh, two-goal game. Smith has had some trouble, though, with passing. Creighton able to get it there, and that's going to be a foul following the stick check by Ellie Fedorowski. This is Ari Evans with the ball for the Raiders. Ari Evans showing some foot speed, moving the ball upfield. Another save by Charleston. She's had a couple of big ones after a quiet first half. Creighton with the centering pass. Nice job by the Stillwater defense. Laura Ninen picks up the loose ball. We mentioned the move on Tara Nagel playing the middle last year, moving to an attacker. Another change Rick Wright made this season to his roster. Grace Lilla, a name we've called a couple of times. She played on the defensive side for the last couple of years. They moved her up to a midfield position. There's Noggle looking for McGuire. She's got her, and McGuire's got a hat trick for the Ponies. That's about 
So the two players who have been hooking up today make it a three goal game again. Noggle with the assist, McGuire with the goal. Both getting more goals than they did in their previous game. They're really uh, they're really heating up for the season here. And Rick Wright said he wanted to get a few more players involved. Noggle and McGuire both had just three goals entering this game. McGuire with a hat trick, her first of the season. And Noggle with a couple of goals and at least one assist. So a good point day for the two of them. And Meredith Perry hasn't scored yet. And there are the lights. The lights are on. Are we home? <laughs> we are. We are home, yes. I was going to say Grace Lilla moved from the defensive side last year to the midfield this year, and she is the face-off specialist. And Rick Wright told me the reason he moved Lilla to the midfield position, she's the fastest player on the team, and that speed can go a long way. Face-off win for the Ponies. They're going to have to back off. There's Perry to Lilla. Lilla was fouled. So she'll be able to sit up right in front of the net. Uh, looks like uh, it's, it's almost like a penalty shot in hockey because they get a run right at the goalie. It is. That's why it's always dangerous, or I should say risky, when you try to get that stick check near that yellow or that blue line. Kaylee Smith with the save. And she needs every save she can get right now. Not a lot of fluidity for Creighton Durham Hall in offense. No, but she's been doing a really good job making some really tough stops tonight. It's been a good day for Kaylee Smith. You know, I know she's given up five goals, but she's made some clutch saves as well. Oh, a dangerous pass, a collision. Grace Lilla to the turf. And Kaylee Smith, she's gonna take it up to midfield before she gets rid of it. She's trying to hook up with number 14, Lowry Dobbs, but Caitlin Shanahan was able to intercept the pass. A dangerous pass by Kaylee Smith. Had that been picked up by Grace Lilla, that likely would have been a goal. In any event, Stillwater forcing another turnover, and that is why they've been able to pull away a little bit in the second half and limit Creighton Durham Hall's production in the first half, forcing turnovers. Forcing turnovers. Turn Noggle in the offensive zone right now, looking to set something up uh, with Andy McGuire behind the net also. Parity. Parody. <laughs> Meredith Perry is back there. <laughs> no parodies here at Wingard Field. Boy, the last game uh, the, the ladies played in, Meredith Perry was on fire. She had some really unbelievably great shots. Yeah, Stillwater, they went down big. They were able to get it within two, but couldn't get any closer in the second half against a high quality Breck team. Thirteen twenty left in the second half, and the Ponies with a three-goal lead. With goals coming from Tara Noggle and Annie McGuire. Meredith Perry has not scored. She was the team leader with 12 and still is. But uh, Rick Wright, you've got to be impressed. You've got to be pleased with what they've been able to do. Nice fake by McGuire. She's able to, right, she got the ricochet. Stoppage in play. And it looks like there was a foul call there. So McGuire's going to get a free shot. 
Kaylee Smith stopped the last one. We'll see what she does here. She won't stop that one. McGuire with goal number four on the day. Goal number four for McGuire, goal number four in this half for the Ponies, and I believe Creighton Durham Hall called the timeout with 12-10 left in regulation. The Ponies, four second half goals, and what was a tight game in the first half, the Ponies look like they're pulling away here and against the team that denied them a conference title a year ago. This is a good step for a team that is working with a few new pieces. Good start to the season for the Ponies uh, tonight, uh, at, at least. And uh, for Andy McGuire, who's really uh, who's really coming alive this season. And with looking, she's got a couple years left to go. A lot of bright days ahead. All right, just a sophomore, Tara Noggle, the senior. So here's some fun facts about the Ponies that I bet you didn't know. Uh, Sammy Chang likes to watch the Disney princess movies when she gets uh, some spare time. And she told me all of them, going back to The Little Mermaid, up to Moana, which came out a few years ago. And we mentioned Grace Lilla, one time a figure skater. Her favorite television show was One Tree Hill. Uh, that's a show I never watched, but the, uh, the, <laughs> I haven't either. <laughs> the Princess series is also my favorite, and it's watched constantly <laughs> in our household. Not gonna lie, there was I, I did enjoy Moana, and I also enjoyed the send up uh, Disney had with Ralph breaks the internet when they featured all the Disney princesses for the first time. <laughs> Abe, do you have a favorite movie or TV show? Four Friends. I have not heard of it. Is that that zombie one? And let me guess, your favorite musician was Tom Petty, right? <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. Tom Petty. I did find Jimmy Starr in the Walk of Fame. Abe wasn't impressed, and then I found Muhammad Ali's, and uh, that changed his mind when I was in L.A. a few years ago. I can't believe you, you said that to him. I was going to go with, like, Jerry Mathis or something. Well, I don't know what Ted's favorite TV show is, but he is a big Jurassic Park fan. Actually, I'm a fan of lacrosse. <laughs> Abe, was all, Abe also put in a plug for Miami Vice, a show I, I imagine you would recall. No, that's before my time. I'm no. just <laughs> well, it gave, it gave us a great soundtrack, Jan Hammer. <laughs> Face-off is eventually corralled by the Raiders. And I guess we also have to give Miami Vice a credit for helping further establish Phil Collins with the pilot featuring in the air tonight. Creed right now setting up a cycle. We haven't seen too many cycle plays in the part of Creighton Durham Hall. But they trail by a four and they're gonna need a rally soon. And Marie Rhoda has to go back up front to number 11, Siobhan Keeley. Raiders fire, and they score. 6-3, I believe that was Lucy Salander, the freshman. Robert coming off a timeout. That's exactly what Creighton Durham Hall needed. Yeah, uh, Creighton really looking for that spark right now that's gonna ignite their offense and, and, and get them to uh, make this game an exciting finish. 
They need to put more pressure on just like that right away. And the big thing is avoiding turnovers. If Creighton can avoid throwing the ball to a Stillwater player or coughing it up to one, they've been able to develop a couple of chances there. This is a big face-off, needless to say, with 11.02 to go. And Creighton Durham Hall, they've won the majority of the face-offs. This one, though, goes to Lauren Einan. Four goals from Eddie McGuire, two from Terran Ogle. That makes up the scoring for the Ponies. Centering pass to Fedorowski. Fires wide right, but there's Meredith Perry. And you'll see a lot of balls near the end line to prevent too much time from being eaten up on the clock. And I see a couple of Cretan baseball players just throwing a Frisbee around in the softball field back there. I hope, <laughs> I wonder what would happen if, if one of them uh, loses their grip and a Frisbee all of a sudden starts flying into the field. How would the players react to that? Uh, that's, that's a serious <laughs> infraction. <laughs> Here's McGuire. If you're the Ponies, do you work the clock here or do you try to get that goal back? What do you do here? I absolutely work the clock. You work the clock. Well, a foul there on Salander who scored last for the Raiders. There's Kangas, over to McGuire. Perry will reset and start a new cycle. Just keep the passing going, and if they give you an opening, then take a shot. But if, they, if you don't, if they don't give you some, if you if you really try to force it, that's when they can knock the ball away and gain possession. There's an example as Fedorowski tries to get an opening. Finally works away around Ari Evans. Tried to find a hole up the middle. She could not, but a foul is called, so Fedorowski will get a free shot. shot. Like you said, wait for an opening. Well, she'll get one here after the foul. This is a big play here if the Raiders want to hang around. Oh, for God's sakes. Yeah, I'm sure Fedorowski with a little deep. And that makes it 7-3 in favor of Stillwater. Fedorowski with goal number six on the season. Yeah, good for her. She's been working hard all night looking for that one. And that's another goal where I don't have to worry about who got the assist. So Fedorowski with the first goal of the night. Stillwater with five goals in the second half. And that extends the lead seven to three. Pony's looking to get back to 500 and build on this. They will play Eastridge on Thursday at Pony Stadium. Robert and I will be over at East Ridge for another road trip with the boys version, or the boys game. They don't do double headers in the Suburban East. And what is that date again on that game? That will be Thursday. And that one at East Ridge, so you and I will have a regular press box to camp out in. Ina with another face-off win. Here's Grace Lilla. She'll go back to Perry, and the pass is a little off the mark. Although with a four-goal lead, you can stomach that a little more.
Creighton with a lot of new faces, a new head coach, and I have to imagine it was hard, harder than usual to get into their usual move for a game. Wow. We're going to have a foul as Meredith Perry was stripped from behind. Yeah, Meredith Perry just stripped the golf ball from a Creighton player on a beautiful, perfect textbook strip and then got just dumped to the turf. Kira Ryan, the guilty party. Robert, I don't think you or I could imagine the whirlwind of emotions that swirled around Creighton Durham Hall today, having to say goodbye to a dear friend of theirs. A lot of folks on this team had a chance to work with Tia Zachman last summer. They bonded with her quite well. Zachman and Sheila Osborne, teammates at Concordia. So you go from a funeral during the day and then having to suit up and play against a top tier Suburban East contender. You gotta give props to the Raiders for pressing on. <laughs> It's not easy to do. No, it's a heavy burden uh, going on without one of your uh, person from your organization that you're used to seeing. As we noted in the first half, whatever happens, Creighton will dedicate this season to Tia. I saw every player wearing numbers on their calves, which I would presume is an homage to Tia Zachman. Creighton couldn't play their first two games of the year due to inclement weather, including a snow out in the middle of April. Ooh. We're going to have a yellow card for a slashing call. So a rare penalty. As we said, they're more rare in the girls' version than they are in the boys, but they do happen. So Stillwater will have a one-woman advantage here. Well, that's not a <clears throat> that's not the best turn of events for Creed. They don't they don't need to be a man short right now. Okay. Uh, All right. So no one goes to the box. I'm still working on my rules. But uh, that's Lucy Salander who does go to the bench. No, they got an OK team. It's still, I mean, still. And even though Lucy's a young player, losing a player of that talent, you know, uh, late uh, in a game where you need where you need the offense, that's that's also tough. Right now, Creighton, they've got to get the ball back. Stillwater milking the clock with a four-goal lead. Showcasing their fine passing skills here. Aiden to Perry. Wright was really hoping this Stillwater team would showcase their depth as the season moved along. You know, Meredith Perry scoring most of the goals for this team. You told me before the game, I'd like to see some other players get in the mix, and Tara Noggle and Andy McGuire have done just that. And uh, with, the, with the time winding down, uh, Creighton's looking at about a goal a minute or better to get back in this game. The problem is they've got to find a way to force a turnover on Stillwater, and that's something they've, uh, they've had a hard time doing defensively. And if this result holds, I'd say that was the difference. Stillwater keeping Creighton Durham Mall from getting on the board in part because they did such a good job getting stick checks, knocking the ball loose. And here's Grace Lilla who sees an opening and she's uh, tripped from behind. They're going to a shot. They're going to call a foul there. Yep. There was some contact, so Lilla with a chance to put a stamp on this one. It was a one-goal game a year ago, and it looks like Stillwater won't have to worry about that kind of pressure this time. Lilla waits for the signal. This time winds down. 
Lilla, that shot may have been deflected. Well, Queen Goya has made some uh, fabulous stops, and even though they're, they're, they're behind, she really, it could be a lot worse. The score could be a lot worse. They made some good plays, and they kept Stillwater in check in the first half. They did not allow a goal in 20 minutes, in the final 20 minutes of the first half. So Creighton and Durham Hall gave themselves a chance to win here. Boy, the Stillwater girls are just going to be content to cycle and carry. Uh, they're just going to carry that clock all the way in. With a four-goal lead, I'm not surprised. And I imagine for the Raiders, as the season continues, the hardest game is always going to be the first one coming back from such a drastic change in the routine as Creighton Durham Hall experienced with the season opener out of the way and all the emotions that come with it. They're still going to think about the friend they lost, but over time it's going to get a little bit easier because you know you'll after tonight you've got your first set of film you can look over, you've got more games to look forward to and you know, this Raiders team, they may have a little something extra as the season moves along, a little more motivation. Not that they didn't have it, but they certainly would like to honor someone who helped build the program. And there's Meredith Perry, who had not scored until that moment. So you said Stillwater content to cycle and carry, and I guess Perry wanted to give us another imprint of her scoring capability. Yeah, and actually I, I'm surprised she's been kept off the scoreboard for this long. She had some great shots earlier tonight, but finally putting away with just about a minute and a half left in the match. So Perry scores at 23-34, six goals in the second half for the Ponies. A runaway win for Stillwater. A galloping win is what Abe suggested. Uh, runaway works well. <laughs> runaway, galloping. I think he was going for the pony reference. But. Stampeding win. <laughs> well, and part of that has to do with how successful, how effective their defense was. Every time Creed Durham Hall tried to move the ball up, Stillwater was able to deny it for the most part. And there's a faceoff win for Lilla. Again. She wants another goal and almost had it just a couple of inches above the post there. But Lilla was not content to run out the clock. She wanted an exclamation point of her own. But the defensive side, real stingy, didn't allow a whole lot of development. And on offense, Tara Noggle, Andy McGuire, some fine passing, fine shooting. Those two. Good chemistry excellent between game. those yes. players. Good chemistry. They kind of know where the other is going to be and know when, to, know when to hit each other with the pass. How high or low, how hard or fast to, to throw it. They're just really good that way. And that chemistry will go a long way as the season continues. Some solid point days for the two of them. Stillwater one and one more. Josie Sherrick a little high there. Yeah. <laughs> Perry. I guess Stillwater not content she to run out the clock. She getting it back. She right. lost it three times in a row and picked it back up. They want one more. They want to go out with a bang. <laughs> uh, they keep overthrowing the net, but... And the Ponies fans letting out some gasp of exasperation. You can laugh it off, though, with a five-goal lead, and it will be a five-goal win for the Ponies. That's a final, eight to three. Four goals from Andy McGuire, two from Tara Noggle. A wire-to-wire -wire win for the Ponies. You know, I'm really surprised they kept Grace off the scoreboard because she had so many shots and won so many face-offs. I thought for sure she was going to net one. Well, they couldn't keep any McGuire off the scoreboard. Four goals for her, two from Tara Noggle. And you've got to give props to the defense from preventing Creighton Durham Hall from setting up a whole lot. Yeah, it was a great, it was a good match. Uh, Creighton learned a little bit about themselves. Still want to learn uh, uh, more of where their strengths are and where they need some work also. 
They certainly did. We'll try to get a word with Annie and Tara before we wrap it up here at Winger Field. This is High School Girls Lacrosse. Stillwater beats Creighton Durham Hall 8-3. If you'd like to sponsor a TSP television broadcast, Patreon is the place. Sponsorships start at just $1 a month. Visit patreon.com slash TSP television and make a pledge for premier Twin Cities sports coverage. And I'm joined by Annie McGuire and Tara Noggle of the Victoria Stillwater Ponies. Annie, we'll start with you. You had just three goals entering this game. You got four tonight. Uh, how did you find so much success? Um, I think it was just kind of the team effort. We, um, our energy was definitely up this game. I think we all worked as a team, uh, and it's it's been kind of a rough a rough start trying to get our shots in. But I think uh, just the energy, the the weather out. I think we just all got to come together. What adjustments did you make from the first to the second half? Because in the first half it was a two-one game. Second half you get six goals and pull away for a five-goal win. Yeah, definitely. Uh, our play started out pretty rough. We didn't really talk much. I think communication. We really upped our game more. Um, you know, we got more communication, our energy up, and I think our spirits lifted. So we worked together more, I think. And Roberts noted the chemistry you and Tara had developed in this game. I think you two hooked up together on a couple of scoring plays. So <laughs> yeah. how have you been building uh, things up with some of the changes that have taken place here at Stillwater? Um, well, I think it's just, you know, again, we come together as a unit. We have a lot of changes, um, you know, building as a program, I think. Um, and especially just talking together, you know, yeah. like with friendship, and we're all just really good friends. and. When we work together, I think we play better. And one of those changes for you, Tara, was moving from the midfield to an attacking position this year. Uh, you got at least three points by our count, a couple of goals and at least one assist. So how have you handled the adjustment from the midfield to the attacking side? Well, playing midi, you kind of have to know the game inside and out, defense, offense. So I think just being mid since I started playing the game, just like the love of the game just made me like attack a lot too, just like – I knew what to do as going in there just because of mid. So, You were on hand, of course, for last year's game, which Creighton Durham Hall won by one. What does it mean to get a big win like this in a key conference duel? Uh, it means a lot. I think it means a lot to our teammates that have graduated. They'll come and they'll look online and see we got this big victory. So we did it for them. And what would you make of this chemistry that's uh, brewing here between you and Annie? Uh, gotta love her, right? <laughs> well, you don't have to. Wow. Well. <laughs> but I take it you two and uh, like like each other, or, you know, like hanging around each other, right? Yeah. You know, we play hockey and lacrosse together, and I think it's 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 going good. Mhm. Mm yeah. <laughs> hockey chemistry leads to lacrosse chemistry. <laughs> I suppose. Oh, uh, what's nice about this one? You don't have to worry about slipping up on a turf field compared to a hockey rink, oh, right? Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> mhm. Mm uh, just quickly, what would you make of the defense today? Uh, because the defensive side really did a great job at preventing Creighton Durham Hall from sitting up. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, it's uh, we're practicing setting on the hips, um, but we just we talk. I think our communication is so much better this year, uh, and just our defense. We we look we look for what's what's working, and um, we continue forward with that. Yeah, I think having good leaders on defense is a big big yes for our team, and I think we're finally stepping up, and people are really just gelling together after this game. All right, you want to say hi to anybody? Hi, Mom. <laughs> hi, Grandma. <laughs> hi, Mom. Hi, Grandma. Congrats on the win. A big one, and we'll see if uh, this starts you on the path to another conference title. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's Annie McGuire and Tara Noggle, and that wraps it up here from Wingard Field on the campus of Creighton-Durham Hall. For Robert Critta and the rest of our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thanks for watching.